If you haven't held this playbill in your hands yet, you've really missed something. Last night I saw the show, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, starring Carlin, Carlin Glynn, and we're lucky to have her with us this morning. Welcome, Carlin. Thank you. Adam. Super show. Thank you. You are one lucky lady. I just found out that your husband, Peter Masterson, is the co-author, co-director. Yes. As a matter of fact, it was uh, Pete's initial idea to do a big musical about the closing of a, a real little bordello in Texas from an article that Larry King, his co-author, wrote in Playboy. And uh, it's been a long evolution. The play was worked on for two years at the Actors Studio. Uh, our composer is a, a female Texan. Uh, and um, it's been really wonderful to get to work on a project for this length of time with one's husband. Well, the most amazing thing to me, having lived for five years in the South, and I do a lot of work in the South, is how absolutely authentic it was and what a delight it was to people, I guess, from the South. Do Texans like? Texans love it. It's, really, it's marvelous. I always know when Texans are in the house because there is a, more of a raucous response <laughs> to much of, <laughs> much of the humor in the play. Uh, there was a tremendous effort made by Tommy Toon uh, and Pete Masterson, the directors, to only hire people that had at least a sound of the South in their voices. Uh, they are not all Texans, but there are many of the young kids in the show are from Oklahoma, Alabama, North Carolina. So there's an authenticity to the rhythm of the speech, which is really what an accent is. It tends to be more rhythm and inflection as opposed to uh, specific vowel sounds. There was know? no way last night to tell that, that every, I mean, I really thought every one of those people were Southern. That's great because Pete and I have always felt very strongly uh, in seeing the Broadway theater southern plays that so many of the accents were phony and if you've lived in that part of the country which is a large part of the country and you're from Houston yes uh-huh well I grew up in Houston it's just such a dissonant sound to hear a phony accent so I'm glad you noticed <laughs> well we've got some uh, some slides of the show now show it tell us what these are Carl the monitors right. over there this is uh, the interview with a, uh, a young country recruit who wants a job in my house who incidentally is fantastic. And yes, she's a wonderful actress named Joan Ellis, Very member of the Actors good. Studio. It's her first play, and she's only brilliant, I she think. She is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> this is when the uh, man from the television station raids my bordello. His <laughs> name is Melvin P. Thorpe, and he comes in with his flashlight and cameras flying. It's a great part, but I didn't like him <laughs> doing <laughs> yeah. that to you. And his name is Clinton Allman. He is brilliant in that yes. you genuinely hate him. Yes, you do. Uh, this is my co-star, Henderson Forsyth, who plays the most marvelous cousin sheriff of Landville County. Oh. <laughs> he is just a, a tall drink of water and just a delight to work with. It is, uh, this is from the last scene in the play when he, we are, I'm going to my farm in the country after the house has been closed. Very sad. That brought tears to my eyes. You yeah, know, it's a very it moving scene. Very moving and yeah. very well done. Thank you. I have so many things I want to ask you about, but I know you really want to talk about the upcoming benefit. I would like to. Um, the Actors Studio is having a big benefit and, at Roseland on Wednesday night, a masked ball. and. The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas came directly out of the Actors Studio. Uh, it's a huge musical. In the economic setup of the theater today, to do a musical costs so much money, and you basically have six or eight weeks to put it up on its feet. So that work that is done in a place like the Actors Studio for two years on developing the book, and our show is a very strong play as well as musical. Yes. The music being written out of the book scenes. This all happened at the Actors Studio. The Actors Studio put on a workshop production for which they paid, and they're a not-for-profit organization, so every penny they have is uh, extremely dear to them. Uh, we mounted it at the Actors Studio where it was seen by four or five people interested in producing it and ultimately Stevie Phillips of Universal wanted to do the whole thing and has really mounted it beautifully. Uh, but as a payback and as a member of the Actors Studio, I'm doing some numbers at Roseland on Wednesday night from the show and it's a very special evening to me because uh, I didn't work for a lot of years when I was raising my family and I really have come back to the theater in the last four years. What's that like? I mean, it must be great since Pete and you share the same project and goals, but yeah. it's got to be tough. It's Well, it was difficult to get hired when you have not worked in a long time. However, what I did do was work at the Actors Studio, which was 
again, terribly important to have a place to function and to be critiqued by the Lee Strasbergs, the Elia Kazans oh, yes. of the world. Uh, as far as then going into my career, I've only had familial support, which is really quite remarkable. I mean, my kids think it's terrific. But you're a madam, I'm <laughs> Yes, they love it. <laughs> Thank you, Carlin. Thank I you so much. I wish we had much. more time. You're I do, too. It was nice Good talking. luck with the show.